Hi, everyone. I'm going to give it just a minute, um, not even a minute, for people to roll in and we'll get started. Okay, so welcome, everyone. Thank you for joining us this evening for an application walkthrough presentation for the University of New England's 2024-2025 application cycle. Uh, we are thrilled to know that you are interested in the University of New England and are excited that you chose to spend the next hour with us. We will begin the session with a presentation about UNE, the College of Dental Medicine, and the application process for our school. And at the end of the presentation, we will leave room for Q&A before concluding the session. If you have any questions during the presentation, please feel free to submit them in the Q&A box that's at the bottom of your screen. And we're eager to answer any questions that you may have, um, and we'll do that at the end of the presentation. So we'll go ahead and get started. So to introduce myself and my colleague, um, my name is Alicia Miller. I'm an admissions coordinator here at the University of New England, and I work closely with the dental medicine program, um, as well as my colleague, Sari Hazard, who is also an admissions coordinator. Um, and you'll hear from her in just a few moments. So a little bit about today's format, we're gonna go through some important dates, some admissions requirements, um, some additional recommendations that we have to offer, and then we'll wrap it up with some Q&A at the end of the presentation. So the University of New England is the number one provider for health professionals in Maine. So we have over 12 graduate and doctoral health related programs. So that includes athletic training, uh, dental medicine, of course, nurse, nurse anesthesia, um, osteopathic medicine, physical therapy, and more. Um, and the University of New England um, is a leader in healthcare collaboration and education. So this is a map here that shows um, both of our campuses. So we have two campuses, one in Biddeford and one in Portland. Um, the Biddeford campus is primarily undergraduate students and the Portland campus is uh, mostly graduate programs um, of the health sciences with the exception of dental hygiene. And both campuses are conveniently located just under two hours from from Boston. So if you ever want to take a break from your studies and take a little day trip or something like that to Boston, um, you can take the train, take a car, visit some restaurants, maybe go to a concert, things like that. So this is a really nice picture of our Biddeford campus. So like I mentioned, the Biddeford campus holds undergraduate students. Um, you will have one course um, if you do end up getting admitted to UNE CDM um, during your D1 year. So a lot of our students like to carpool to that class. Um, and it's about a 25 to 30 minute drive from the Portland campus. And this is a nice photo of the Portland campus. So it is a sort of cozy, small campus. It has a great community feel to it. Um, there's a lot of things that are in, within walking distance to the campus. Um, and it's also really close to downtown Portland. So um, if you're a foodie, we have a ton of restaurants in downtown Portland. Um, it is, there's some waterfront. Um, if you like to go out on the weekend sometimes, maybe take a break again from your studies. Um, there's tons to do in downtown Portland. And just a quick little plug, uh, Portland, Maine was actually voted um, number seven on uh, the list of best places to live. And I know recently it was voted, I think, number one for the best place to live as a remote worker. So there is definitely lots to offer in the Portland area. And I'm going to hand it over to Siri for the next couple of slides. Thanks, Alicia. Um, so as my colleague Alicia mentioned, we work together in UNE's Office of Graduate Admissions, um, specifically with the dental medicine program. So we hope to work with some of you over the coming application cycle, um, and it's nice to virtually meet you. Um, Alicia has given us a little bit of an overview about the University of New England. I'm here to just share a little bit, little bit of information about the UNE College of Dental Medicine, or UNE CDM as you'll hear us refer to it. Um, to begin with, we are a very mission-driven institution. So our students in the dental medicine program 
truly make a difference every day, um, just by virtue of being in the program um, and being that support to our community. Our mission statement is to improve the health of Northern New England, as well as rural and underserved areas, while shaping the future of dentistry through excellence in education, discovery, and service. I knew I'd get almost the, all the way through it. Alicia, do you mind advancing to the next slide? Um, so just quickly, there are a lot of great dental medicine programs out there, and I thought I'd take a moment to highlight some of the things that make UNE's DMD program a little bit unique. Um, so to start with, uh, you'll receive as a student in our program, lots of hands-on training in our state-of-the-art facilities, including our oral health center simulation clinic, um, which we just renovated in the summer of 2022. Our oral health center is also a fairly new building um, that opened its doors in 2013. Um, we have a strong focus on early and extensive direct patient care experiences and I'll go into that in a little more detail on the next slide. Um, you can expect a curriculum that is comprehensive, innovative, and grounded in evidence-based dentistry. And truly uniquely, you will learn and practice alongside students in other health professions. So as my colleague Alicia mentioned, UNE hosts on our Portland Graduate Health Sciences campus a number of health professions programs, and you'll have the opportunity to work interprofessionally um, with those other health professions programs. And also, you will complete, as a student in our program, a 10 to 12-week clinical rotation at one of our clinically affiliated sites in the fourth year, which is longer than the standard dental school rotation. It was a great opportunity that we're um, excited to, to offer our students, which again, I'll go over in a little more detail on the next slide um, whenever you're ready, Alicia. Um, so focusing a little bit more on the clinical and curricular progression. As a D1 student, within the first week or two of the curriculum, you're gonna be, start drilling on your type of dot, not real patients, don't worry, um, but we'll get you started early and we'll kind of continue that momentum throughout your academic career. Um, mostly it's gonna be simulated work and didactic work in that, that first year, and then you'll have some peer-to-peer -peer experiences. At the end of the first year, our students are placed into one of our four group practices. So we have a group practice model that's vertically integrated our group practices and clinic consist of second through fourth year students that work together to provide comprehensive patient-centered care under the guidance of their faculty group practice leader. Um, so as a new D2 student, just joining your, your group practice for the first time, um, we'll also partner you with a D3 or D4 student within your group practice who, you know, in addition to your faculty group practice leader that you would build a very close relationship with, is an additional source of support um, and a mentor for you, a, a peer mentor as you acclimate to clinical experience. You might start out in the second year doing more basic things as you build your skills and confidence. So you might dental assist your upper class student colleagues or provide local anesthesia. And then throughout that second year, you're gonna rapidly um, build those skills and confidence and be prepared to take on more. By the third year, you'll spend three full days per week providing patient care in the oral health center as part of your group practice. The fourth day is reserved for treatment planning with your group practice members. Um, and the fifth day, we still wanna keep you fresh with that biomedical science knowledge. It's gonna be a little more didactic um, for that fifth day. Um, students in our program will receive exposure to a wide variety of cases, including complex ones. Um, and by the D4 year, you'll continue to work within your group practice um, but you'll also go out on that 10 to 12 week externship experience at one of our clinically affiliated sites. Um, those are located throughout New England. Um, you can go on up to two if the opportunity is available. And, you know, we really see the growth in our students after they complete this experience. It's something that we're proud to be able to, to offer them as it is sort of a, a nice chunk of time to get that real world exposure in a different patient care environment perhaps working with different uh, patient populations too. Um, next slide. And I also thought I would just take a moment to highlight our awesome student body. So I think um, one of the great things about UNE is just the community here. Um, our students, specifically dental medicine, are very active and engaged on campus. Here's kind of a sampling of some current and active uh, dental related student clubs or organizations. So they're always, you know, getting volunteers to do some community thing or get other members of campus involved in their initiatives. Um, and then we have a number of more general interest and less dental related uh, student clubs and organizations as well that students are welcome to be a part of. So 
you know, maybe you love mini golf and there's a mini golf club. Um, there are tons of ways to get engaged. And if you don't see your interest represented specifically here, you can always work with our Office of Graduate and Professional Student Affairs to create a new student club or organization. Next slide. So before we move on to the next section of the presentation, you know, a question we get asked a lot is, what does UNE look for in applicants and future dental medicine students? These are some good qualities to keep in mind um, as you assess different programs and whether, you know, your personal fit, whether that's the right program for you, because just like we're looking for um, strong applicants who align with sort of what we're seeking and our values, we know and understand and um, are eager for students to be doing the same thing. We look for um, academics, so grades, test scores, just like realistically all other dental schools are going to look at. These are the strongest indicators we have of just um, potential academic success in a rigorous curriculum. But above and beyond that, we look at a variety of holistic qualities that we feel are just as important. Um, so, you know, leadership skills, um, teamwork skills, emotional intelligence, cultural competence, and then specifically, the excitement for your chosen profession. What is your passion for the profession? What drew you to dentistry? What will you bring to the field of dentistry? And what is your vision for yourself as a future care provider? What kind of drew you here and, and is meaningful to you about this field? Um, you can show that through your essays. Those are a great way to kind of show where that motivation is coming from and that connection, as well as your experiences. So documenting any uh, engagement with the dental profession in the experiences section of your application is also important. Um, and the other thing I wanted to highlight specifically from this list is, as I mentioned, we are really looking for students whose goals, mission, and values align with our own, specifically serving underserved communities. So we really like to see students who demonstrate a commitment to volunteering or community service, while this is not something that we require. We also like to see those values reflected in essay responses, you know, if that's genuinely um, sort of a focus that is meaningful for an applicant. That's certainly something we like to see. Next slide, Alicia. Okay, so now we are going into the uh, sort of details about application to our dental medicine program. For the upcoming uh, cycle, which is a fall 2025 start, there are a couple dates to keep in mind. The first dates uh, would be the open dates for the IDEA ADSAS application and the submission date. All applicants to our program must apply through the centralized application service, IDEA ADSAS, which is spelled out there for you down at the bottom. If you um, wanna take the time to read it, I'm not gonna twist my tongue, um, but it is right there. Um, you can go in and begin working on your IDEA ADSAS application as early as next week. So May 14th, it's coming right up guys. Um, you'll have a little bit of time to familiarize yourself with the interface, start writing your essay responses, soliciting letters of recommendation, and so forth um, before you can actually submit your application on June 4th. So ADSAS won't allow you to submit to a program until June 4th. Those are the ADSAS dead, or not deadlines, I guess, but sort of start dates, open dates to keep in mind. Specific to UNE, we have two important deadlines. Our first deadline is the deadline to take the DAT for the first time. So to be eligible for admission to our program, we require for um, a fall 2025 start this upcoming cycle that you take the DAT for the first time on or before October 1st, 2024. We will not accept scores from after this date. So it's really important to keep that um, in your mind as you're building your application timeline. The second deadline specific to UNE is our submission deadline. So while we obviously encourage all applicants to apply as early as you feel confident in your application, it will only be to your benefit, we will accept applications until our electronic submission deadline of November 1st, 2024. Next slide. And then very briefly, I'm going to run through what you can kind of expect from UNE should you apply to our program. Um, every dental school has its own unique admissions review process, so this flow might look a little different depending on which schools you're applying to. Um, so this information is really specific to the UNE CDM. So step one, obviously, is submitting your application electronically to us through ADIA ADSAS. 
once your application is verified by ADSAS, you know, this can take up to six weeks. Um, so we do encourage you to apply as early as you feel confident in your application. Um, we will put it under preliminary review once it's received by UNE, once you select us as a designation and hit that submit button um, and it comes through on our end, we will start preliminary review. And what that means is we're going to look at your application to make sure it has all the required materials and we'll let you know via email if you are missing anything. We'll also, as a courtesy, um, let you know if there are any prerequisite courses that you have yet to complete um, just so that you can start those academic plans or get in touch with us if um, there was a course that we need to review more carefully, something like that. At the conclusion of that preliminary review, um, select well-qualified applicants who have complete and verified ADSAS applications will be invited by our admissions committee to submit a supplemental application processing fee. Um, it is important to note that not all candidates will receive this invitation, but it is uh, required that you be selected for the fee and pay it to move forward in the review process. So again, at conclusion of preliminary review, you'll either receive the supplemental fee invite to continue forward through review, or we'll notify you via email that at that time, your application is being held for additional review at a later date due to the competitiveness of the applicant pool. If you do find yourself um, held for review at a later date, we encourage you to utilize academic update periods through ADSAS, which will recalculate your GPAs and let us know how great you're doing on your courses, as well as submitting any new um, DAT scores um, through ADA ADSAS and continuing to update your, your experiences. So anyway, we'll leave the, the hold candidates would remain held um, unless otherwise notified by UNE. We will continue to, to look at um, what's happening with you and, and what's going on with your application after that point. But those candidates who after preliminary review are selected to pay the supplemental fee and pay it by the deadline, they will then receive a whole file holistic review by our DMD admissions committee. Um, so then from those applicants who um, receive the whole file review, select competitive candidates will be invited to interview by our admissions committee. Um, and again, just like the supplemental fees, invitations for interview are by invitation only. And typically most of those interviews um, take place for us between August and December. Um, but it's not uncommon for us to hold spring interview sessions. Um, it's just at the discretion of the admissions committee. And an interview would be required for an applicant to be accepted to our program. And then um, December 13th for candidates that complete an interview would be the earliest that we could notify you of a waitlist or acceptance decision because we do participate in ADA ADSAS traffic rules. So the American Dental Education Association sets specific dates when um, dental schools can notify students of initial acceptances. December 13th is the date for the upcoming cycle. It is important to note, and Alicia will go into this a little bit later, that not all candidates will receive a final decision on December 13th, um, but that is the earliest that we could notify a candidate of an acceptance or a waitlist decision. And I'm all set with that slide. All right, so now we're gonna talk a little bit about prerequisite coursework that is required specifically by UNE. Um, so they're all listed here. I'm gonna run through them, but um, don't worry, these are all on our website. So if you leave the session and you're worried that you forgot one, don't worry, um, you can go to our website and, and review all of these there. So we do require um, anatomy, anatomy with lab, and uh, it's important to note that um, this prerequisite can be fulfilled one of two ways. So the first way is by taking human anatomy with a lab. And the other way would be completing anatomy and physiology one and anatomy and physiology two. Um, we require general biology with lab, microbiology with lab, biochemistry, general chemistry with lab, organic chemistry with lab, um, an English composition or technical writing course, and then 12 additional semester credits of biology, chemistry, physics, or calculus. So some additional considerations for prerequisites that we require. 
Um, all prerequisite courses must be completed with a grade of C or better. So a C minus grade would not be accepted. Um, additionally, applicants are um, strongly encouraged to note or indicate any planned or in progress coursework um, at the time of application submission. So that just lets us know that you do have plans for any outstanding prerequisite courses. Um, and on that same note, if you intend on taking a course and you're just unsure whether or not it would satisfy a certain prerequisite, um, please feel free to reach out to us and just uh, include um, like a link to the course description or a copy of the syllabus. And that way we can take a closer look at it and confirm whether or not that course would fulfill the prerequisite um, should you get a grade of C or better. And finally, um, prerequisite courses must be completed with official transcripts submitted to ADSAS prior to the uh, anticipated matriculation date of the program. Um, so I'll go into this a little bit more, but it is important to note that we can only accept official transcripts. Sarah, anything else to add about prerequisite courseworks? Okay. All right. So this slide is a little bit about um, some recommended coursework. Uh, so this coursework listed on this slide is not by any means required. However, it is highly recommended. Um, so I should say the two that are in green are highly recommended courses and the others are just recommended courses. So the courses on this slide um, are ones that our program and admissions committee have found uh, to just sort of aid in the success of students in the program. So if you're um, planning your upcoming semester or maybe looking for a course to take this summer, um, we would really encourage you to consider any of these that look interesting to you, um, just to sort of give you a leg up and, and help prepare um, for dental school. And um, this is sort of going into the next section of the presentation. So we're going to talk about uh, transcripts, letters of evaluation, CAT scores, and shadowing. So like I mentioned a few minutes ago, um, transcripts must be submitted through ADEA ADSAS, and they must be official transcripts. Um, and another important piece to mention is that all transcripts from any colleges or universities that you attended um, must be submitted. So even if you took one course um, at a community college during your academic career, um, that must be included in the transcripts that you submit at the time of application submission. And then lastly, um, updated transcripts should be submitted to ADSAS directly um, unless requested by us by UNE. And for sending um, official transcripts, um, this is the address right here. All right, so thanks, Alicia. Um, in addition to sending in transcripts to ADSAS, which you'll have to do regardless of whether you apply to UNE or not, we're now moving into specific to UNE review. As I mentioned before, each dental school has their own unique um, review process and set of requirements. For an application to be uh, considered complete for application to the UNE CDM, we require two letters of recommendation. I'll go into specifics um, later as we do have some specific requirements. An official DAT score report. Again, that must be from on or before our October 1st deadline. And 30 hours shadowing a dentist in person. The other requirement to keep in mind doesn't apply to all applicants, but if you have completed coursework internationally at the undergraduate level or higher, you would need to submit to ADSAS an official course by course um, evaluation. And the two credential evaluation services that we accept for um, UNE's DMD program would be World Education Services or Educational Credential Evaluators. Um, so we would only accept those two. Next slide. 
So letters of recommendation. As I mentioned, we require a minimum of two letters of recommendation. One of those letters must come from a science professor you've taken a course with. Um, the other reference can be a little more open-ended. We do strongly recommend if you have a good relationship with a dentist you've shadowed, that is a great um, reference. So we, we like to see a nice glowing recommendation from your dentist that you've worked with or shadowed. Um, another example might be a professional reference or you know another academic reference. Letters from friends or family members would not be accepted. We really want someone who can speak to your professional and academic potential. And we do prefer, although we don't require, that letters be dated within three years, um, just because that tells us that this is a current and relevant representation of um, who you are and your, your current strengths. The next slide. So uh, letters should be coming from those who can really speak to your specific strengths, um, specifically academically or professionally. Um, and areas to highlight or focus on would be your adaptability, conflict resolution, uh, intellectual ability and you know, writing ability, um, communication ability, um, self-awareness, reliability, teamwork skills, things like that. Um, so when you're thinking about who your references will be, these are great things to keep in mind. Um, all evaluations would need to be submitted via the ADSAS evaluation portal. Um, and I would encourage letting your evaluators know about your request as soon as possible, just because they do get a high number, um, you know, faculty get a lot of these type of requests, and it might be a little bit of a delay for them to submit their letter through ADSAS. Um, so again, just good practice to reach out as soon as you can once you've identified who your evaluators will be that are going to speak to all your unique um, and amazing strengths. Next slide. And again, as I mentioned, but it is just really important to, to be mindful of by time flies as you're planning your application. Um, all applicants would need to take the DAT for the first time on or before UNE's October 1st DAT deadline. You'll need to uh, report your scores through ADSAS directly from the American Dental Association. And we don't consider an official score report. So we'll need to wait until your official scores come through ADSAS in order to consider them. We will consider uh, DAT retakes from after the October 1st deadline, but we would not consider uh, initial scores from after October 1st. Next. And then shadowing. So applicants must complete a minimum of 30 hours in-person dental shadowing. And for UNE, we consider shadowing um, separate from any administrative or clerical functions. So examples of what we would not consider dental shadowing would be um, working with billing or insurance, um, doing paperwork or filing or other administrative duties, um, scheduling appointments and so forth. We do really feel that those administrative functions definitely have value in exposing you to kind of the workings of a dental office and what that looks and feels like. Um, it's all good knowledge to have and it's valuable experience, but we would not consider it shadowing. Our shadowing requirement really must be direct patient care observation um, and or, you know, chair side assisting of a dentist. Next slide. And the next thing I just wanted to go over really quickly is writing prompts. So um, most of these are standard across the application. The only one that's specific to the UNE CDM would be your supplemental essays. So for any dental school you apply to, you're gonna fill out your personal statement. Um, they'll ask you, how has COVID-19 impacted your pathway to becoming a dentist, if that applies to you, if your education has ever been affected or interrupted um, for reasons other than deficiencies in conduct, academic performance, or COVID-19, if applicable, you can say not applicable if it's not. Um, and then ADSAS will also ask you about your manual dexterity. So as a future dentist, um, you must be aware that manual dexterity is really important. And this section is a good opportunity for you to highlight um, what you do uh, to keep your um, fine motor skills sharp. So maybe you play classical guitar or you make fine jewelry, um, whatever you're doing, um, those are good things to be thinking about before you submit your application and include um, as many relevant examples in that essay as possible. I wanna really focus on the personal statement 
and the supplemental essays. So we put a lot of value into reading those essays on your application. Your personal statement um, really tells us who you are um, and tells us a lot about your experiences and what drew you to dentistry. Um, your supplemental essays will also explore how your life experiences, values, um, and other factors might make you a really suitable candidate for the UNE CDM. So I would encourage you with your personal statement and your supplemental essays specifically, really take your time with those. Um, run them by if you have a health professions advisor or a friend that's really good at writing that you know, you know and, and trust their opinion. Um, I would definitely encourage you to write and continue to kind of um, intentionally fine tune those two pieces of writing. Um, they really are short of an interview, the most personal way that we can get to know you and your unique capabilities. Next slide. All right, so some reminders just to go over. Um, it is important to ensure that you keep track of the progress of your application. So it is the applicant's um, responsibility to ensure that they're not missing any items to make sure that their application is complete. Um, IDEA Adsas is not going to reach out directly if you are missing any material. So um, just be aware um, of your application and, and that you have everything submitted that you need to have submitted. Um, if you're unsure of your verification status in any way, um, please don't hesitate to reach out to graduate admissions. Um, we are happy to let you know of any uh, missing materials or incomplete application items. And um, we'll share our contact information at the end of the presentation. Um, take advantage of IDEA ADSAS academic update periods. Um, so again, like Sarah mentioned before, like that'll help calculate any updated GPAs um, and just show what you've been working on and how you've been possibly improving your coursework. Um, this one's very important. Make sure you're monitoring your email regularly um, for communications from us throughout the application cycle. Um, we only communicate through email, um, so and some emails are time sensitive. So it is very important that you check it, if possible, every day, just to make sure that you didn't miss any communications. And finally, just be mindful of school specific and application deadlines. Like we've mentioned before during this presentation, um, each dental school is different from what they require. Um, so just be aware of those deadlines. So completed applications. Um, applications are considered complete at UNE when all required materials have been submitted. Um, it's important that applicants take survey of the requirements and necessary materials prior to submitting an application. And if you submit your application without all required materials, you will receive an email from graduate admissions notifying you of the missing item. And again, um, UNE communicates with applicants through the email address that's listed on your ADSAS application. So we're gonna talk a little bit about the supplemental fees that Sari mentioned previously. Um, so after preliminary review, um, select applicants will um, be invited to complete the supplemental application processing fee. Um, so I just want to reiterate again that these fees are sent by invitation only, so not everyone will receive um, an invitation to pay this fee. Um, once eligible applicants have paid the supplemental fee, um, their application review will be continued by the DMD Admissions Committee. And to talk about interviews, um, interviews are a required part of the application process and once again, are conducted by invitation only. Um, the Office of Graduate Admissions will communicate interview invitations to qualified applicants. Um, for the 2024-2025 application cycle, um, interviews will be completed virtually through Kira Talent. So Kira, um, is an asynchronous interview. Um, so we do not require in-person interviews um, and you will receive, um, if you're selected, an interview invitation via email. 
Um, and like Sari mentioned before, per ADIA ADSAS traffic guidelines, um, the initial acceptance notification date for the 2024-2025 application cycle is December 13th, 2024. So to reiterate, um, it's not guaranteed that you will hear a decision on December 13th, but that is the earliest that we can issue an acceptance or waitlist decisions. All right, so thank you, Alicia. I think that pretty much concludes our presentation material for today. I know we ran through a lot of information. I hope that you found it helpful. Um, before we switch over to Q&A, um, we definitely are eager to answer your questions. So feel free to pop them in that Q&A box. Um, I just wanted to take a minute to put a spotlight on some of our upcoming events. So if you'd like to learn a little bit more about UNE, you can go to this grad.une.edu site. Um, you can fill out a form and we'll make you kind of like a personalized page where you'll see upcoming virtual events, on-campus events, campus tour dates. You know, hopefully Maine is beautiful in the summer. Hopefully we might be able to welcome some of you for a campus visit. Um, all of those upcoming events can be found if you create one of those pages um, using this uh, URL. So putting in a plug, you know, we hope to continue to hear from and work with some of you throughout the upcoming cycle. Um, so this is a great way to stay engaged. And then as always, if you have any questions as you're either preparing your application or after application, um, don't hesitate to reach out to our graduate admissions office. So gradadmissions at une.edu is the probably fastest way to get a response because Alicia and I like to divide and conquer and get back to you all um, as soon as possible with whatever information you might require. Um, and then if you wanna follow UNE's College of Dental Medicine, you can kind of see what's, what's happening on, on Instagram. Um, and sort of check out the, the goings on here currently at the UNE CDM. So uh, thank you again, everyone. We really appreciate your interest in our program and we've already got a good number of questions in the Q&A box, so keep them coming. All right, I'm just gonna take one second to stop sharing my screen and, and look through the Q&A box to get started on answering some of your questions here. Right, so the first one that I'm gonna start with, uh, we can answer sort of generally, um, is what DAT scores are needed for admission to UNE? So we can't say uh, really a specific DAT score. Um, however, generally, um, uh, the DAT range tends to be between 18 and I believe uh, 21 and 22 in, in each section. Um, so Sarah, do you want to talk a little bit more about those scores? Yeah. So um, as I mentioned, UNE looks at a lot of factors in addition to academics and test scores. Um, our average accepted applicants do tend to have between an 18 to 22 in each section of the DAT. And then just generally speaking, um, while it may not be the most competitive score, we do like to see usually like a 17 or 18 at, at kind of minimum in each section. But each applicant will have different strengths. Those are just kind of helpful benchmarks to, to keep in mind. Okay, next question here asking about um, prerequisites. So I'm gonna try to rephrase it. Um, so this question is asking um, if we would advise to submit an application first um, for prerequisites uh, that will be completed by July. Um, so if I'm understanding the question, it's should you submit your application um, and then list in progress courses. So what I would say is definitely um, don't submit your application just to submit it. Like definitely take that time between um, May 14th and when the application opens in early June to really ensure that um, you have all your required materials together um, and everything that you need. Um, while including um, the prerequisites that you have been uh, planned or in progress so that we can see um, that it is on your radar um, and that you're working on it and have a plan for it. Yeah, and I would just add, Alicia, um, that, you know, it's perfectly normal um, and not uncommon at all for applicants to have one or more prerequisites that are either planned or in progress when they apply. Our requirement would be um, that they all be completed with that C or better grade, no C minuses, 
um, prior to the anticipated start term in August 2025 for the current cycle. Um, and if you know you don't know honestly which course you're going to take yet, um, that's fine. You know we like to see your academic plan in your transcript entry when you apply. Um, if you do have a planned course, but um, if things change or you don't have a course lined up, it's not going to significantly impact review of your application. Um, however, during the next academic update period, I'd encourage you to go in and um, maybe add your plans for your course as you continue to finalize your, your semesters. Okay, next question, in case anyone trickled in sort of late and missed this answer. Um, this question is, are interviews online or in person? Um, here at UNE, uh, for the dental medicine program, we do hold interviews online uh, through Kira Talent, which is an online talent platform. And that may change for upcoming cycles, but for the current cycle, um, we're going to be conducting uh, the virtual Kira Talent interviews. Okay, so next question touched on a little bit just a few moments ago, but this question is asking, if I haven't taken microbiology and anatomy in college, what can I do to fulfill that requirement? Does that mean I am not qualified to apply? Uh, that does not necessarily mean you're not qualified to apply. And like Sari said, it is very common for um, applicants to have outstanding prerequisite courses. So um, I would recommend maybe uh, looking at surrounding community colleges in your area, um, maybe online courses. Um, we do accept online and community coursework as long as it is regionally accredited and you receive that um, grade of C or higher. And I would encourage just to kind of pop off Alicia's response. If you're not sure about a course or you know before you register, it can never hurt to reach out um, and we're happy to let you know whether or not that course fits our requirement. Okay. Um, this question is asking, uh, is there priority admission for New England applicants? So I would say, um, and Sari, I think you might be able to phrase this a little bit better than I can. Um, I know there is a slight preference to those in the New England area, but um, it truly is very slight. Um, yeah. Not to interrupt you, I'm sorry, Alicia. No, that's okay. I was trying to find the words and they just Yeah, weren't. it's a very slight preference. So we encourage all applicants, um, all highly qualified applicants from any geographic region to apply. Um, I'd say, you know, over the past couple cycles, our matriculated classes tend to contain about 65 to 75% of students who actually come from outside of Northern New England. So we do give that slight preference just in service of our mission where our focus is um, not just on um, rural and underserved areas, but you know specifically also Northern New England. Um, so we give slight preference to uh, Maine, New Hampshire, Rhode Island and Vermont applicants. But as Alicia mentioned, it, it really is slight preference and you can see that reflected in our matriculate numbers. Okay, I'm going to direct these questions to you, Sari, because um, you can explain group practices really, really great. So um, I'm going to kind of squish two questions together. So how are the group practices organized? And what is like the group practice sort of made up of? Like how many professors are per group? Um, what is that set up like? Yeah, so while you're working in clinic, sort of separate from your group practice, um, you will interact with a number of College of Dental Medicine faculty. So you'll have one faculty group practice leader that is the sort of mentor and support system for your specific group practice with your other D2, D3, and D4 um, UNE CDM students. Um, you'll also, while you're in clinic, um, have support and interaction with a variety of other clinical faculty. Um, but your, your faculty group practice leader is going to be someone who you build a really close relationship with. Um, and the group practices, they function just like group practices essentially out in the real world. The Oral Health Center is a working patient care clinic. Um, and so you'll work with your team to provide that comprehensive care. Um, you'll do treatment planning together. You'll look at the specifics of each case. You'll bring up recent research or, um, you know, approaches that might be more patient-centered, depending on 
the patient's um, uh, needs and means and a variety of other factors. So um, it truly is like working in a group practice, which we also feel um, helps benefit our students when they go out in the real world, because it's, you know, very similar if you follow that group practice model out into your professional career to what you'd experience here at UNE. We just have a lot of extra support for students as they acclimate to that environment. So hopefully that helped to answer the question. Okay, so a great question here um, regarding Cura Talent and the Cura Talent platform. Basically, what is it? Um, so the Cura Talent platform, um, like we mentioned, if you are chosen to interview, um, you'll receive that interview invitation via email. Um, you'll quickly check in to the interview. Um, and then uh, the way that it's set up is questions are pre-recorded by our CDM faculty and um, chosen students. And you get a short period, I think it might be about 30 seconds to a minute to uh, sort of, you get the question first, you have a second to sort of gather your thoughts and, and your answers, and then um, you answer those questions. So um, it doesn't take a super long time. Um, you can sort of go at your own pace, but realistically, I don't believe it takes longer, should take longer than uh, maybe 30 or, or 40 minutes. Um, is that, I think that's correct. Uh, right, Terry? That's yeah, I would say, no, say. More than, no more than 45 minutes, yeah. although if you want to prepare, um, you can go in ahead of the deadline for your interview and complete practice questions. So you can get used to the interface before you actually submit the ones that really count. Just make sure you select practice questions when you're doing that. It'll be really obvious, but just had to say it. Okay, so a good question here. Um, do students source their own patients? Do you want to take that one or do you want me to? Um, I'll take it. So students would not be responsible for finding their own patients. We have a very robust and diverse um, patient pool here. Uh, like I mentioned, our oral health center is a working patient care clinic, um, and we have a coordinator who does screenings um, for incoming patients, figure out what their needs are, um, what types of cases they might present, and then she'll match those up to our group practices depending on what the needs are of the students clinically and what experiences they may need more of or um, things like that. So we'll have more than enough patients um, we tend to have a pretty long waiting list actually at our oral health center and our students do not have to find their own patients, but we will give you um, tons of interesting and um, a variety of cases to, to work with through that patient pool. Okay, next question. Um, what is the average DAT score and uh, overall GPA and science GPAs of admitted applicants? So um, to mention again, the Average DAT score um, in each category ranges from um, 18 to about 22. And uh, the average, um, both overall and science GPAs, um, range between 3.2 and 3.8. Um, now, just to say, uh, it doesn't guarantee that you will receive an interview or be admitted if you fall within these ranges. Um, and these metrics do tend to um, to change or could change um, per cycle. So just keep that in mind. And I'd like to just quickly, um, sorry, Alicia, I want to clarify our average uh, GPAs for accepted students are actually 3.3 to 3.8. Um, so it's small distinction, but just important information to keep in mind. And as Alicia mentioned, you know, falling within those regions would not guarantee an inter interview invitation or an acceptance, but it's just helpful to see what our, you know, most recent over the past couple cycles, accepted student profiles tend to look like academically. Okay. Um, this next question is is a good one. Uh, it's regarding the anatomy um, prerequisite requirement. Uh, this question is asking um, the anatomy with lab prerequisite offered by UNE online, which is the College of Professional Studies here at the University of New England or um, an anatomy and physiology one and two series, um, which should be taken to fulfill that prerequisite. Um, it truly does come down to personal preference. Um, so the UNE online 
uh, anatomy course would be accepted to fulfill that prerequisite. So it really comes down to uh, what your course load looks like um, and, you know, personal preference, I would say. Anything else to add, Siri? So a quick one, uh, do shadowing hours need to be completed with a general dentist or can we shadow a specialist? So any exposure to the field of dentistry, you know, as long as it's a dental a dentist, whether you shadow a specialist or a general dentist, it's all really valuable experience. Um, so um, I encourage you to seek as many of those types of opportunities as you can. Shadowing a specialist, if you have the opportunity, might spark a new interest or passion for you. Um, and again, it's all just really good exposure to the profession. Okay, this next question I think is a good one to cover just because the COVID-19 pandemic is still somewhat recent. Um, so online courses and labs completed during the COVID-19 pandemic, um, will they be accepted? So I guess the important thing that we could touch on um, would be the pass-fail system. Um, and Sarah, you can, you can uh, talk more about this. But um, if you were in school during this time and... Um, you were given the option to get a letter grade over a pass-fail grade, um, you would have had to choose the uh, letter grade in that instance. Um, however, if you did not have the option for a pass-fail grade, um, in certain circumstances, a uh, passing grade would be uh, considered. Yeah, so I think just to piggyback off what you were saying, um, there are specific semesters during the height of the COVID-19 pandemic, um, which are listed on our admissions page, and I don't want to misstate them, so um, I will let you folks look them up if this may apply to you, um, where, as Alicia mentioned, some schools did not give students an option um, when they were in the midst of taking a prerequisite course um, to have a letter grade. It was just mandatory pass-fail. If we can get confirmation from you that you normally would have taken this for a letter grade, this prerequisite course, but your school institute a mandatory um, pass fail, we'll accept a passing grade. We just need um, official confirmation from your institution's registrar that that would apply to you. And then it's important to clarify for non-prerequisite coursework. We always like to see a letter grade because it just gives us a better idea of who you are and your academic capability. But for a non-prerequisite course, it really, you know, you wouldn't have to take a letter grade or retake that non-prerequisite course. This just applies to prerequisites. Okay, a great question regarding um, letters of recommendation. So this question is asking, um, would you accept or do you accept a third letter of recommendation um, if we think it would strengthen our application? So although we require a minimum of two letters of recommendation, um, it's highly encouraged uh, that you have more submitted if um, you think that'll be a strong letter of reference from, um, a, I don't even know the words that I'm trying to say anymore, sorry, but but um, yes, you can have a third one be submitted. Yes, I'm, your I'm glad that question came up because I actually forgot to mention, I believe that ADSAS will allow you to request up to four letters of recommendation um, through the evaluation portal. So if you have four great references, enthusiastically, the answer is yes, um, please request those letters. We want to learn um, what they have to say about you and, again, your unique potential. Another piece that I'm realizing I forgot to mention on that slide is we will accept a committee letter or a composite letter from your health professions advising, um, if that applies to you, instead of the separate two letters. So if you have a committee letter, a composite letter packet from your advising office, um, that would fulfill your required um, letters of recommendation. So I'm glad that question came up. Okay, this next question is um, a two-part question. So the first question um, is, what is the latest date that we can submit our applications to still be considered early? Um, I guess what I would say for that one is that we don't have an actual uh, early submission deadline like some other um, programs do. However, we highly recommend that you um, submit your application as early as you feel comfortable. So. Um, like we sort of mentioned before, uh, you don't want to apply just to apply. You want to make sure that your application um, is 
all set and ready to go. Um, but we don't have an actual like hard early submission deadline. Um, anything yeah. to add to that, Siri? Yeah, so I would say that that answer is very individual. Um, so depending on your circumstances, your application materials, um, and just kind of your unique situation, you might apply, you know, right on June 4th. You might need a little more time. What I would say is the earlier you can apply and feel confident about your application and how you're representing yourself um, will always be to your benefit. One way to think about it that I, I think is really helpful is given that the majority of our interviews do take place between August and early December, to give yourself the best chance for an interview, we need time to read your application, review your application, and so forth. So for the best chance at an interview invitation, um, definitely apply as early as you, you can. Um, the other thing to note is, as Alicia mentioned, I believe in her portion of the presentation, if you are missing materials when you apply, um, so you're missing a DAT score, for example, maybe you apply June 5th, but you're not set to take your DAT until you know July 1st, we won't be able to move your application forward without the official components that we require. So that's another thing to keep in mind. Generally speaking, I encourage people to still apply early, even if you're missing um, a DAT score. I might wait if you're you know, missing uh, letters of recommendation that you know are coming soon. I might time my application around that just so, um, again, we have as much information about you um, when we come to full file review, that initial review um, on hand as possible. But again, if you retake your DAT, if you add additional letters of recommendation um, after you apply, we will continue to re-review those materials. So again, it will be a very individual application timeline depending on your unique circumstances, but the earlier you can apply, as long as you feel strong and confident about your application will only be to your benefit. Okay, so I am just taking a look at the time and we are um, nearing the end of our session. We've received a ton of questions. So if your question wasn't answered, please feel free to um, send us an email and reach out to us. Um, so I'm gonna go ahead and ask really one more question. Um, are there, sorry, let me rephrase that. Um, is there an expiration date for prerequisite coursework? I guess I was leaning on you to take that one. But. Sure. Um, <laughs> so no, we don't have an expiration date for prerequisites. Anything you've taken at the undergraduate level or higher, as long as it fits our requirements and you got that C grade or better, we would accept towards fulfilling our prerequisite coursework. Again, one thing to just keep in mind, um, and again, this is sort of dependent on the individual and their circumstances. If you've had a significant gap between your academic career and when you apply to dental school, um, it may be advantageous for you to either take some additional science courses, or if you didn't do so well, maybe you got a C on one of the prerequisites and you really felt like you could have gone for that A, I might recommend checking out a community college or online um, coursework that interests you in the sciences just to keep that um, foundational scientific knowledge fresh that will be so important if you are accepted to any dental school, not just UNE, um, to have that solid foundation. Um, so again, no expiration date for prerequisites, but we do like to see that, you know, that scientific knowledge and foundation is strong and fresh in your, your brain as you apply. So if there has been a significant gap between, you know, undergrad and um, when you decide to apply for dental school, it may be worth considering, you know, whether you want to strengthen your application by taking one or more science courses. It would be an individual decision. All right. Um, well, it is seven o'clock, so it is time. And out of respect for um, your time and our time, we're going to go ahead and conclude the session this evening. Um, but I just want to take a moment to thank you all very much for, for joining us tonight. And um, hopefully you got your questions answered. Again, if you still have some more questions you think of after this, please feel free to reach out to us. Um, and we are hoping to see your application in the next couple of weeks. Great. Thanks again, everyone. We hope to connect with you.